Hey, what's up? So today we have a Red Max EBZ 8500 that's having a whole host of problems. The first one being kind of obvious, the pull cord stuck. I also have another one over there and it's kind of having some of the same problems except one additional one. So that's gonna be its own video. Catch that out later. But moving forward, this one also is in need of another throttle uh, handle, I guess. The owner said that it just broke into pieces and it's been cut up, so yeah. First things first, I have a that on order. It should be coming another couple days. From the looks of it, I'll have to buy two. But I want to look at this pull cover and see if we also need to order one of those. Looks like there's a couple T25s. Oh, there's Loctite on it. Removable Loctite. That save you the noise. I'm really hoping I don't have to take off this whole cover. Okay, good. This is one that I personally own too. I mean, not this exact one, but this model. So, I personally think this is a great one. First things first, all that seems to be in good working order. When you pull on this, it does retract. However, it's just not all the way. So the spring is either needing some lubrication or uh, I, mean, I suppose it could be broken, but I don't think so. Yeah. We're in desperate need of some lubrification. That has retracted everything. And cleaning. So I'm going to take a wire wheel. I'm going to clean this surface and try to clean it here. This is a washer. That makes that cleaning even easier. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and then we'll uh, give it a pull then. Yeah, this washer definitely, I mean, a lot of it cleaned up, but some of it just doesn't look all that clean, but yeah. Next. Some of these, most notably, I think it was the Echoes. No, never mind. I think Hondas are what I'm thinking of. They are uh, reversed thread, so you have to spin them the other way to take them off. So it's lefty tidy. Just put a little oil in there and finish sinking it down. Perfect. I'm going to put that on. Just reverse, put it on, and we'll see what we have to do next. I took this little cover off, off the carb, because I wanted to see exactly what the throttle was, if it was stuck, and it's not. So I'm gonna put you over there, and we'll give it a pull. Let's see what happens. Choke. That's 
Something tells me this hasn't been ran for a long time. It took a long time to fill that primer up. If it does start though, I'm not gonna be able to uh, shut it off unless I either choke it out or I unplug the spark plug because the kill switch is part of the handle that's missing. throttles up. It was a little smoky to begin with, but that's to be expected for something that I can tell hasn't ran for some time. The tank is actually very clean on the outside. The fuel is mixed fuel. I mean, I could tell that from the tank, but it's definitely a little heavy on the mixture. I think what we need to do next is just replace the the little handle. Okay, we're back. I have the parts we need. So what we're gonna do is we're going to reattach it. First things first is we're gonna have to remove this one. We've already moved it from the base. We're gonna need these screws. I'll remove those later. And then looking okay, on this one might be a little easier. So the kill wire has two wires. If we need to remove both and they, it's a little hard to tell, but they're male and female ends, so you can't really connect them wrong to begin with. And in addition to that, we're going to have to remove the throttle cable from the carb. The whole assembly just kind of slides out. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Interesting note. So this is a Xmark product says it came in the X mark bag no problem this is a Husqvarna do you really see a difference I sure don't in order to do so I have to remove this little cap this slides right off we're gonna want to keep that because if you don't if this were to get stuck or release quickly uh, the throttle cable to slide right out like that so now with that out of the way should slide out there we go and unfortunately for both you and I trying to see where the connections are it's pretty much impossible for two of us, so I'm just going to disconnect it and I'll be right back. This is always real fun to have to put back in. I do believe this was, sorry, I know you can't see, I'm just fishing it through. Um, fifth, so the X Mark one was $54, and the Husqvarna one, excuse me, I'm getting reversed. The X Mark one was $58 and the Husqvarna one was $54. I would have just bought two of the Husqvarna's, except I, they only had one. So I actually was kind of forced to use the real one. And I think in my original talking point of it being the same, I might have forgotten it, which one was which and showed you the wrong one. My point being is they're exactly the same, just one cost more for whatever reason. This is the clip. This little slot goes over the throttle cable. Oops. Come on, why are you being like this? It's 
because it's a small space. That's why. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. I don't know why that was hard. It just slipped right on. Yes, let's leave the jokes to a minimum. Anyway, next we put our little cap back on. That also should just slide right over. If it's the right side, which it does appear to be. There we go. Perfect. So on the base of the um, kill wires, there's this little clip that just comes right off. You do kind of want to keep that because if you don't, it's really hard to show. It's a very small space. I'll show you the after. But if you don't, this cable can and will like to find its way out sometimes. And you'll be pulling on the throttle. And if it's a little cockeyed, it won't actually return. It'll just kind of push itself out. And then you'll have a really high engine speed. It's really annoying. It's best to keep this in. It kind of keeps that to a very minimum at the best. Next, we're gonna put this where it belongs. Take the screws out. It's gonna start one. And we'll start the other one. Oops, looks like I didn't start it very well. do we have so what do we want to guess 25 we have t25 speaking of which if you haven't purchased one of these extra long torques you obviously have never worked on a steel and I congratulate you So this actually pivots. There we go. Up when you don't need it. That way you can avoid breaking it. Just kind of pull on it. But, you know, no one ever does that. I think the next thing we need to do is turn this on and see if that kill switch works. Watch, it doesn't start now. It's only been a couple days, so. Pumpy, pump, pump, pump. And we're going to want a little higher of throttle. Choke is on. Yes, I think it's on. No, I was off. There we go. filter yes yes it did uh, yeah this is the one and a new pre-filter but other than that I think we are good to go so if you broke your um, arm or handle throttle lever whatever you want to call it on a EBZ 8500 or 8550 then this is going to be process you need to go through. It's not that hard. It's not that expensive. Like I said, buy the Husqvarna version. Uh, let me see if I can give you a part number. The Husqvarna part numbers 
It's a lever, Husqvarna lever. Now, let us compare it to, no, never mind. It's the same thing. Red Max also has literally the exact same part number, except like I said, it is a different price. So that's entertaining. Uh, a lot of these parts are interchangeable. Really, I think the only thing that is isn't is just the plastics around it. It looks obviously different, but other than that, I've replaced cylinders and pistons with the Husqvarna ones because I couldn't get the Red Max and they were cheaper. So I'm going to leave you at that. Have a good evening. Follow me on Instagram at smallengine101. I'll catch you on the next video. You have a good rest of your day.